Welcome to Unstoppable Faith with Dr. Kazumba Charles. This program is designed to inspire you to stand on the Word of God and to help you build unshakable and unstoppable faith in Jesus Christ. Here is your host, Dr. Kazumba. Thank you once again for joining wherever you are joining in around the world. Uh, we are so thankful for you and for, uh, uh, for, for standing with us and, and joining us as we teach the Word of God. Now, today, we, as we continue on uh, understanding the character and the nature of the kingdom of God, uh, uh, we began many series back, and I encourage you, if you haven't um, uh, uh, you know, watched other series on understanding the kingdom of God and why Jesus taught in parables what what is a parable why was a parable so significant in uh, revealing the mysteries of the kingdom of God so today we continue as uh, Jesus had just been uh, teaching uh, his disciples about the parable of the hidden treasure, we looked at the value of the kingdom of God. We talked about uh, the kingdom of God is so valuable such that the man who found it, it's like he had found the treasure. He had to sell all that he had to go and pursue it. So as Jesus has been teaching about the parables of the hidden treasure in Matthew chapter 13 verse 40, uh, 44, and of the priceless pearl, uh, uh, verses 45 to 46, he continued to teach by using another kingdom parable, the parable of uh, the net. The parable of the net. I want us to go to Matthew 13, verse uh, 47 to 50. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a large net thrown into the sea. It collected every kind of uh, fish, and when it was full, they dragged it to shore, sat down, and gathered the good fish into containers but throughout the worthless ones so it will be at the end of the age the angels will go out separate the evil people from the righteous and throw them into the blazing furnace in that place there will be weeping and garnishing of uh, teeth what is uh, Jesus teaching here Jesus is uh, compelling the kingdom of God to a fisherman who went and gathered all the kinds of fish. None of these fishes were left out. All kinds of fish were gathered. And as he gathered all these uh, kind of fish, he threw out the ones that uh, were not needed. He threw out the ones that uh, were bad. And uh, Jesus is saying in, in, the, in, in, you know, in the age to come, in the time to come, uh, it is the same in the kingdom of God. God will gather everybody, every denomination, every religious person, every created human being will be gathered together. And those who did not give their life to God or who did not live according to the kingdom of God will be thrown away. As Jesus is giving these principles, we got to look at uh, the background of uh, this, uh, 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 this, uh, this, this, the parable of the of the net. The kingdom of God is like a, a fishing net. So let's look at the uh, background here. A fishing net is a large net that fishermen used in Jesus' day, and it is still used by so many people from all kinds of uh, 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 backgrounds uh, in parts of the world to catch all kinds of fish. The central theme of this parable is that in the age to come, Yahweh or God will separate the citizens of the kingdom of heaven from those who are in Satan's kingdom. 
So all who have rejected Jesus as the king of kings and rejected his kingdom will spend their eternity in the lake of fire. Now, this is a very big and uh, uh, big uh, subject right here. You see, everybody need to understand here to, 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 be, uh, to be able to live in the kingdom of God, to be able to live in the kingdom of heaven, one must uh, be forgiven, one must, must have Jesus, uh, must have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. One must have uh, given their lives to Jesus. One must have uh, surrendered their lives to Jesus. Because uh, in the kingdom of God, or in the kingdom of heaven, there is no weeping or ganching of teeth. Why? Because of the presence and the glory of God. So in the age time, that's why as Christians we need to understand this. There is no need for us to judge people right now. God will do this himself. There is no need for us to judge other people. We are to just inspire people to give their lives because what the Bible teaches is that anybody who is not in the kingdom of God today, who has not given their lives to the kingdom of God, will not inherit the kingdom of heaven or will spend their lives in eternal fire. And this is very clear in the Bible. To avoid eternal fire, one has to surrender their life to Jesus. One has to give their lives to Jesus. You see, with the grace movement, we try to you know, minimize the, the, the impact uh, 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 of, of, of this very thing that many people don't understand. You can't live in the kingdom of God while you are still living in the kingdom of uh, darkness. You got to come out of the kingdom of darkness to accept the kingdom of heaven so that in the, in the, in the, in the days to come, when Yahweh comes to collect all those who are part of his kingdom, you will be among the numbers of those who will spend their eternity in the kingdom of heaven. So the central theme of this parable as Jesus is sharing is that in the age to come, God will separate the citizens of the kingdom of heaven from the, those who are not part of the kingdom. And the, the good news is that anybody today, anyone listening and watching this program can be part of the kingdom of God. Anybody who decides can be part of the kingdom of God. It is not complicated. It is one of the easiest way to be part of the kingdom of God and at the end of this program I'll be able to you know to help you just do like that it is very simple it only takes a decision and that decision is by placing our faith in Jesus Christ accepting the you know his forgiving power accepting his grace and that God begins to do what to work in us as we be, we continue to be part of uh, the kingdom so all who have have rejected Jesus will not inherit the kingdom of God. So the parable of the net is another simple illustration that teaches about the kingdom of heaven and what it is like. The kingdom of heaven is here now and the kingdom of heaven is here with everybody from every background, from every denomination. They are part of, they, 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 they are here. But in the age to come, God will begin to separate those who've been part of his kingdom away from those who have been pretending to be part of his kingdom. That's why it is very serious for you and me to make up our mind, to decide, to surrender to Jesus, to give our lives to this Jesus, to continue to live according to the kingdom of God, to continue to live according to the power of the kingdom of God. It is beautiful, people of God, to give our lives to Jesus so that we can live in peace with him, so that we can live in joy and without being, you know, um, uh, uh, thrown into the lake of fire. So when fishermen put a net in the water, they expect to catch all kinds of fish, good and bad. Uh, at least they'll pull, they, they, they pull uh, the net to the shore and separate and uh, until they pull the, the net to the shore to separate those kind of fish. They keep the good ones, but they throw away the bad ones. Jesus compares the fisherman's net to the kingdom of heaven. 
in a sense that just like the fisherman catches all kinds of fish and later separates the good from the bad ones it will be like that at the end of the age the angels of God will separate the righteous people from the wicked ones the righteous will inherit the kingdom of heaven that's why we can never fool God <coughs> We can never fool God. You see, it is God who sees us in darkness and uh, in light. It is God who knows everything about us. It is God who sees beyond what the human eye can see. You know, we can be out in the public, you know, uh, uh, pretending to live for God, uh, and yet we uh, don't have God in our lives. That's why it is important for us to continue to walk in humility before God, in, uh, in, in a spirit of surrender, to God to allow God to continue to change us to continue to you know to mold us because God sees everything and anything about us we can hide from man we can hide from people but we can't hide from the eyes of God the eyes of God sees everything about us the eyes of God knows everything about us the God we talk about he knows and he sees where we are at that's why it is important important for us to continue not to leave for the gospel not to leave you know, not to live to impress people, but to live to honor and to glorify God. To live to give our lives to, to God so that God who sees in darkness can help us overcome every challenges and every shortcomings in our lives. So here Jesus uh, uh, is talking about how the angels are going to come and uh, separate the people. And uh, it will be like that in the, in, in, the, in the time to come. The angels will separate the good from the bad. The parable of the net closely parallels the parable of the wheat and the weeds. We looked at that in our last program and it has the same meaning as the parable of the wheat. So the parable of the, the, the net has got the same meaning with the parable of the wheat and the weeds. Wheat and the weeds must grow together, must be allowed to grow together in the same field because if you try to get to, to destroy that wheat, you know, to, to uproot the weeds away from the wheat, you may risk destroying the wheat as well. That's why Jesus said, no, 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 let the wheat grow together with the weeds at the end of time now I will separate I will separate wheat from uh, the weeds we got to desire people of God to be good fish and to be good wheat, wheat the wheat that God desires and um, and, uh, and, uh, and it also describes the final judgment in which the righteous are separated from those who reject him and his rule and thrown into the lake of fire. It is uh, very important for us to understand just as God is a God of grace, is a God of forgiveness, is a God of love, is a God of mercy, but his word is very clear. If we don't accept that love, accept that mercy, accept that grace and continue to live in a lifestyle that is not according to his kingdom we will find ourselves in the lake of fire it is just declared that God has given us a choice it is not God's intention to punish man it is not God's purpose and intention to just say I'm gonna punish man God has paved the way God has made the way for mankind not to spend eternity in the lake of fire by simply accepting Jesus Christ by simply accepting the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So the parable uh, 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 of the nature, uh, you know, uh, uh, also gives us uh, the final judgment. The kingdom of heaven is here now. The judgment is in the future. So the kingdom of heaven has arrived today, but the judgment is in the future. God is not judging right now because he has released the kingdom of God and he has released the kingdom of heaven. His intention is for us to rule and reign in the kingdom today here on earth to rule and reign with his presence to rule and reign with his power now we're going to move to another favorite parable that i like so much because in this parable now we're going to see another step of what god is uh, able to do and what god has uh, provided for us and uh, what god has a uh, 
made sure and ensured that we don't go and spend the eternity into the lake of fire. He has already provided an escape, an escape for each one of us, whether wicked, whether not wicked, if we call upon the name of the living God, if we call upon the name of Jesus Christ and surrender our lives to him, we are assured of uh, inheriting the kingdom of God. We are assured of inheriting the kingdom of heaven. So in the next parable here that we're going to be looking at, it is the parable of the unmerciful servant. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 21 to 35, then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how many times could my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Uh, Jesus responded, as many as seven times. Uh, 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 now tell, uh, I tell you, not as many as seven. Peter first says, as many as seven times. And Jesus says, I tell you, not as many as seven, Jesus said to him, but 70 times seven. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who wanted to settle accounts with his uh, slaves. Now, this is very powerful, powerful uh, scripture here. We got to understand the background here. Uh, when we began to, well, we, the, the parable of the unforgiving servant is very key here. When, when, when he began, so, so Jesus continues, he says, uh, 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 the kingdom of heaven can be compared to the king who wanted to settle accounts. But before we just look at that, first we got to understand Peter here. Peter, as he's suggesting, uh, how many times can my brother be forgiven? He said seven times, because in, in those days, actually, uh, a person was going to be forgiven at the count of three. I think you parents, you do that. We, do, I do that as a parent. You count to three, one, two, three. And the third time, you're not forgiving nobody. So Peter here uh, understands and uh, he knows. And uh, in the scriptures, I'm going to be digging deeper into this. Actually, we're going to do a topic on uh, the weapon of forgiveness because it comes from 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 this uh, this portion of scripture here. So as a, as as a Peter is saying seventy times se seven times to forgive somebody, Jesus says no. No, 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 70 times. What is Jesus talking about here? Why 70 times? Is it the tie? Is it the, the, the numbers? Absolutely not. Let's continue reading here. He says, the king, when, he, when the king began to settle accounts, one who owed 10,000 talents was brought before him since he had no way to pay it back. His master commanded that his wife and his children and everything he had be sold to pay the date. At this, the slave fell face down before him. And he said, be patient with me. I will pay you everything. Then the master of that slave had compassion. He released him and forgave his loan. But... That slave went out, went out and found one of his fellow slaves who owed him, what, 100 denarii. He grabbed him, started choking him. Oh my goodness, he, forget, he forgot that he was just forgiven a few seconds ago for owing 10,000. Now for a person who just holds him a hundred, he begins to do what? He begins to choke him. He's choking and said, pay what you owe. At this, he's a fellow slave fall down and began begging him, be patient with me. I will pay you back. But he wasn't willing. On the contrary, he went and threw him into prison until he could pay what he was hold. Uh, he, he was hold. When the other slaves saw that, he he, he had taken place what had taken place when the other slaves saw that saw what had taken place they were deeply distressed why because they knew this guy was just forgiven not too long ago and him he was unable to forgive and if this, this, the, these guys, they went and reported to their master everything that had, had happened. Then after he had summoned him, his master said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you that date because you begged me. Shouldn't you also have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And his master got angry and uh, handed him over to the jealous to be tortured until he could pay everything that, he, that was owed. So my every father, now Jesus summarizes here, 
So my heavenly Father will also do to you if to do to you, for if each of you does not forgive his brother from his heart, does not forgive his brother from his heart. I want you to pay attention right there. There is forgiveness that is forgiven deeply from the heart, not from the mind. Many people forgive others from the mind. They just uh, say, I forgive you, but they haven't released it from their heart, meaning it will still be there. Your grudge, your upset, your, your, your bitterness, uh, it will still be there because it hasn't been released out of your heart. Because out of your heart, out of how heart are issues of life. So everything comes out of our heart. So here, the, the, the Jesus has compared this um, this uh, uh, a parable to, to what to the parable of I mean uh, the, he has compared uh, this um, this uh, this um, this servant to the kingdom of God. He, uh, and and we need to understand something very important here. We need to understand something very important here. Let's go back to uh, Peter's question, Master. How many times must I forgive? We, we have to go back to that question uh, and then understand the significance and the depth of this. So within Judaism, three times was sufficient to show a forgiving spirit based on the following scripture. Job chapter 33 verse 29 to 30. Look at this. God certainly does all things two or three times to a man in order to turn him back from the pit. Do he... Um, he made it in order for him to, 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 um, to turn him from the pit. And then we have to look at uh, Amos chapter 1 verse 3. It says, uh, the Lord says, I will not relent from punishing Damascus for three crimes, even four, because they thrashed Gilead with iron sledges. You remember that? I will not re uh, relent from punishing Damascus, Damascus for, 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 for three crimes. Uh, even four. So meaning a three, one, one crime, you are forgiven. Second crime, you are forgiven. Third crime, you are forgiven. And it is, it is done. And you are punished. Amos 2 verse 6 says this. The Lord says, I will not relent from punishing Israel for three crimes, even four, because they are righteous persons for silver and a needy person for a pair of uh, sanders. So now we come to Peter's question, 70 times 7. Peter's idea of forgiving someone seven times isn't so, sorry seven 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 times uh, uh, isn't all that bad as compared to three times. So P uh, Peter had raised the bar a little bit from three to uh, to what to seven times. So Peter is uh, really even increasing the bar here. So some rabbis required their students to forgive offenders three times, but J Jewish uh, but Jesus in uh, Matthew eighteen verse twenty one went even even overboard, he went beyond that three times to, to, to say 70 times, 70 times to forgive somebody. So Jesus has raised the bar here. But what is the point of Jesus saying you have to forgive uh, uh, 70 times, uh, 70 times? What Jesus was trying to say to the disciples and what he was trying to portray to, to these disciples was that in the kingdom of heaven, in the kingdom of heaven, forgiveness is unlimited. Forgiveness is unlimited. God is forgiving you right now. God is forgiving your sins if you repent right now. God is forgiving you if you call upon him right now. Whatever you did, God says uh, in the kingdom of, God, uh, of heaven, as long as you are here on earth, forgiveness is unlimited. God de has decided, he has already decided in the kingdom of God to forgive us so that we 
don't miss on inheriting the kingdom of God. But if we die without the forgiveness power of Jesus Christ, then guess where we end up to? We end up in the lake of fire. That's why it is important for us to make a decision, to decide, to decide to do what? To decide to, 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 to ask for forgiveness from God. To ask for forgiveness from God so that we can live within peace and live, you know, in, uh, in transformation. So the context of the parable of the servant is that king, the, the king in that parable uh, symbolizes or sim was, a, was a picture or symbolizes God. And to settle accounts symbolizes divine judgment. The king's forgiveness of such a massive debt is a dramatic illustration of God's forgiveness of our sins. Our sins cause for God's judgment, but because of God's mercy and God has forgiven God has forgiven our sins through the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The parable of the unforgiving servant demonstrates the character of God. God, he is a merciful God. God, he is a forgiving God. God, he is a king, his kingdom, in, in his kingdom and in his kingdom there is only fullness of forgiveness. If God's kingdom is fully operational in our lives, then we too, we can and forgive others. Why? Because we remember where we have come from. We remember how God has forgiven us. We remember the sins that we have committed all these years and God has forgiven us. So a person who does not forgive has not experienced the forgiveness power of God. Only those who have uh, uh, experienced the fullness of the forgiveness power of God and, uh, uh, and remember what God has done in their lives lives are able to in the power of forgiveness. Why? Because they are thankful of the forgiveness that God has given them. Now in quickly here as we begin to close uh, uh, this program uh, uh, today here, I just want to I just want to quickly run into a few things here. Uh, effective forgiveness. Uh, effective forgiveness. Maybe we can look at that topic next time. But I want you to know, I want you to know right now, uh, uh, Jesus, he was sharing to us that forgiveness is uh, available for you. Forgiveness is available for you. Forgiveness is available for all that you have committed. But you must be willing to accept that forgiveness. You must be willing to, uh, to call upon God. God has decided to forgive our sins. And forgiveness is available for you if you accept that forgiveness from God. If you accept the forgiveness power of God today, you are going to experience the forgiveness. You are going to, to experience, uh, you know, the peace of God. You're going to experience, you know, a tangible anointing of God. I just want to pray with you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare in your, we declare your praises over those who are watching and listening to this program today. That, Father, let their sins be forgiven as they call upon your name right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Wipe away their sins of God. Give them a new beginning, Father, in Jesus' name. I declare today as your servant, oh Father, I declare a new chapter, I declare a new season, and I declare a new life of faith in Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name. Listen, people of God, you are there, you listening to this program, you are... You have never given your life to the Lord. You can never understand and experience the joy that comes by living in peace with God. I want you to pray. I want to pray with you right now. Just say, dear Jesus, I cry out to you today. Forgive my sins. Cleanse me. Wash me. Purify me. Give me a new beginning today. I surrender to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Give me a new chapter in my life of living in the 
praises and in the glory of God. I repent of my sins and turn away from every wickedness. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And there, my friends, that's how we live in the kingdom of God. The characteristics of the kingdom of God is full of love and full of mercy. And I, I don't want you to miss that. God bless you. Join me again next week as we continue to look at uh, the kingdom of God. May the Lord bless you and watch over you. Shalom. Shalom. Faith is the currency of the kingdom of God. Thank you for tuning in to Unstoppable Faith with Dr. Kazumba Charles. If this program has been a blessing to you, write to us at life at and share your testimony.